So up the front here is your hitch and your A-frame. So when you're going to connect the van up to your vehicle, you'll reverse up. You can use your jockey wheel to raise and lower the height of this. You'll then lower it down so that this black handle locks down onto your tow wall. This little red button here will pop up and you'll get a green ring around there. That way you know it's secured onto your tow wall correctly. You can then push this secondary lever down. There's some Alco brake pads in there that will squeeze in onto your tow wall. You've got a standard 7 pin trailer plug here. You do also have an additional auxiliary cord. This is designed so that you can get these two wired together for a 12 pin trailer plug. That is so if you want to run the fridge while you're towing the van, but we'll go into that more when we get to the fridge. You've got a breakaway cable. This is designed to loop back round on itself and sit underneath the hitch here. Now what happens is if for some reason this hitch ever gave way, this breakaway cable will pull, it'll snap and it'll put your handbrake on. Your handbrake, just like a car, push down for off, pull up for on. Once you've got your hitch all connected up, you need to get your jockey wheel out of the way. So you're going to wind this right up until the arms touch under here, so your jockey wheel is up as high as it can go. You'll then undo this handle here and pull the whole jockey wheel unit up so that your jockey wheel is resting against your A-frame and then tighten that up out of the way. When you get to a campground and you want to disconnect the van from your vehicle, you're going to do that in reverse. You're going to undo that handle, drop your jockey wheel down and tighten it up lift the secondary lever you then need to lift and hold this first lever while you wind your jockey wheel up if you don't hold this lever up it won't release your tow wheel it'll just pull your vehicle up with the wheel. in behind your a-frame here is your front locker so you've got the spare wheel you've got space for two nine kilo gas bottles now there is only one connection on the left so you will have to manually swap them over it's got a standard sort of barbecue spin-on connection there if for some reason you ever want to shut the gas off entirely, you can push this yellow lever around and that will shut your gas off. Just make sure that you open it up again when you do want to use it. You've got your leg winder in here, so this is to raise and lower the stabiliser legs on each corner of the van. And you've also got your mains power cord for when you're going to plug into a campground. Now you will see um, the, this front locker has sort of holes and grills in it. So it is open to the elements, so you don't want to store anything in here that you don't want getting sort of dusty and damp. These front lockers do have a payload of about 20 to 23 kilos. So once you've got two gas bottles and your spare wheel in here, you don't want to put too much more in this front locker is because if you overload it, it will affect the towing of the van. On the side of your van here is the connection for your fresh water. So you want to fill up your fresh water barrel, undo the lid on the top, drop your pump hook up right down to the bottom. You do have a little sort of dust cap that just sort of sits inside the barrel there. You then have got your connection to the van. So it does correspond to the van so it does only go on the one way. Just pop that in and then once you've got that clipped in there, you do have some little flags that you'll push around on the top and bottom. That just holds your pump in place. Once you've got that set up, you can then go inside and turn your water pump on. Now there's no gauge inside the van or on these caddies, so it's really important that you keep a good eye on them. You don't really want them to get sort of below a quarter of the way empty, um, because the pumps can start to curl up out of the water and it could run dry without you knowing. When you're going to remove this pump, just make sure you squeeze those little flags out of the way. You then need to squeeze the buttons on either side of the pump here and pull it out. Make sure when you pull it out that you do pull it out by this head piece here and not the little skeleton on here because if this does break um, it does let air in there and then your pump will just suck air and not work. Just next to your housing unit here is the vent for it when you're running your water heater on gas. So you only want to remove this travel cover when you're actively running the water heater on gas. The reason for this is if you leave it off all the time you'll get dust and dirt in there and also spiders like to crawl in there and create webs because it's nice and warm. So it's really important that you push it on at the bottom and then clip it along the top when you're not using it. This locker here is your battery locker. So you've got your deep cycle battery on the left here. You don't really have to worry about that so it does the same thing. On the right hand side here is the connection for your mains power. So you've got your mains power cord. Hold your cap back. There is a little groove on the plug here which corresponds to the one on the van so it does only go on the one way. So hold that back, wiggle it in, 
and then there is a little groove in the locker here so you can position the cord so that you can shut the locker it stops anyone being able to get to your battery and it keeps the weather out as well also on the left and right hand side here is you do have a little coax for if you're wanting to run a portable satellite um, and there's also the isolator switch for your motor mover so when you're wanting to use your motor mover you've got this little key here so you're going to pop that in press it in and then rotate it and it'll click into place it'll line up with that little on line that means that your motor mover has been live livened up for use just make sure when you've finished using the motor mover that you do come back to this locker and turn it off if you don't turn it off it will start to drain your 12 volt battery just behind your wheel here this is your grey water outlet so when you're going to connect your grey water caddy up you'll undo this lid you've got your grey water hose so you'll push that on there and then pull these levers round these cam locks are new so they can be a little bit stiff You've then got your breather pipe here, that goes in at the bottom of the caddy. Once you've got that set up, you need to make sure that the two valves on the caddy and the one underneath the van are in the open position. You've got a little gauge on the top here so you can keep an eye on when your grey water caddy is getting full. When it's getting full and you want to empty it, turn the valves off on the caddy, remove your breather pipe. It's a really good idea to shut the valve off underneath the van, it just prevents any grey water from spilling out onto the ground. You can then disconnect your caddy and wheel it away to empty it. Underneath this lid here, you've got a little bungee cord. This is for if you want to tie the caddy to the chassis or round the wheel to stop it rolling around in the wind. Or you can pop your toilet cassette on here, strap it in and empty both at the same time. You do also have a little cap and spout in here. This is for once you get to the dump station, you can pop this on the end and it gives you a nice direct pull when you empty the caddy. So on the back corner here in this little locker, this is where your toilet cassette is and also where you fill up for the flush water in your toilet. So this top piece spins out, this is where you put the fresh water for your toilet flush. So when you open that up, depending on the model it generally takes about 8 to 10 litres in here. There is also a pink toilet chemical that goes in here, it helps with smell but it also helps lubricate all the seals inside your pump. Now when you're filling this up, there is a bit of a hump here so it may look like it's um, full but you, if you just keep pouring water in it will push it in over that hump. There is a little glass tube on the side here so you can keep an eye on when it's getting full. When you're storing the van, especially over winter, it's really important that you empty this out so that your pump doesn't seize or get any frost damage. So what you want to do is spin off this little connection at the end, but you also want to pull this piece off at the side and pull it down, and that'll release it. You can then tip it over and drain out all the water in your flush. For your toilet cassette, when you want to empty it, push this little yellow flap down. You can then slide your toilet cassette out. Now, these three items here are controlled inside the van, so you don't need to worry about that. When you go to empty the toilet cassette, spin the spout out. If you're having trouble getting this cap to release, you do have a little air release valve at the bottom that you can push, and that should loosen up the cap. You can then drain that out. There is a blue toilet chemical that goes in here. Again, it helps with smell, but it also helps break everything down so it's nice and easy to empty, and you can measure that out on your little cap here. So once you've got that all sorted, you can then bring it back to the van, slide it in, and make sure it clips in behind that yellow flap. have got a storage locker at the front here, and then next to that here, this is a little connection for if you're wanting to run a barbecue off the gas bottles in the van. So there is a little bayonet fitting that goes in here, and then you can run a gas pipe from the van to your barbecue. Because the gas bottles are already regulated inside the front locker, you can't have a regulator on this line to the barbecue because with double regulating it, it won't work. So inside your wardrobe here, we've got your 12 volt fuses, your 240 volt RCD and your MCBs. So if you're ever having any trouble with 12 volt or 240 volt, just come and check these. This little red switch here, this is for your battery charger, it's currently in the on position. You don't ever really have a need to turn this off. By keeping it on, it means that any time you are plugged into mains power, it is actively charging your battery. Above that here, 
is the 12 volt for your van so it's currently on car um, again you could get a 12 pin trailer plug wired up by an auto electrician so you can check the battery voltage of your vehicle but if you flick that to the van that will liven up your 12 volt up above your entry door here you have a little voltmeter so you can check on the condition of your battery you've got another 12 volt master switch you want to pop that on you've got a master switch here for the entry light so the one just in the kitchen and then right on the end here is for your to your fresh water pump so once you've got your fresh water barrel all set up outside you can come in turn your pump on um, you will find if you haven't used the van in a while you will have to open up the taps and just let some of the air out when you've got the pump on and it's pressurized you will get a little light on the left there just above your little dresser area on the left as you come into the van you've got the controls for your water heater on gas and your room heater on 240 volt so when running your water heater on gas you want to turn the outer dial to the little flame you'll hear a click underneath the front seat that's your water heater trying to ignite you can adjust the temperature from 30 right round to 70 as you can see we've had a little red light come up that means that the water heater has failed to ignite on gas so what you need to do is turn it off go and check your gas bottles are connected properly check they've got enough gas in them and also check that the little travel cover on the outside has been removed once you've checked those three things you can then come in turn that on and you should be good to go for your room heater on 240 volt you've got 2000 watts 1000 watts and 500 they'll each heat uh, the heater to your selected temperature of one right round to nine it just depends on how quickly you'd like the room heater to heat up this here is your room heater unit so up on the right hand side here is to operate your 12 volt fan so the circle in the middle is off the a on the right hand side that is automatic so there are some temperature sensors in here so when you've got the heater running on gas or 240 volt it will kick the fan in and out as needed to maintain that temperature and then round on the left here is continuous up the top is your fan speed so you've got one right round to five uh, whenever you've got the fan on it will pump out through these little vents you can run the fan when you're using the heater on gas or 240 volt to pump the warm air around or you can run it on its own if you'd like to circulate room temperature air on the left ear here is to run your room heater on gas so when you're first igniting it you normally want to turn it up quite high you will hear it start to tick so that's your room heater trying to ignite on gas so while your igniter is ticking this temperature dial is also your purge button so you're going to push and hold that in while you're holding that in you'll want to look through this little viewfinder here about this far down and about 25 mil in there's a piece of glass that matches the shape of this so once you get the angle right you'll be able to see it you should see while you're holding the purge button a blue flame hold that for a couple of seconds and then when you release your purge button it should kick into a nice bright orange flame so you know that your heater has ignited on gas you can then adjust your temperature from there when you go to turn the heater off on gas you'll go to the zero and then you'll want to push past that like you're going back round to the 10 and that will turn your get heater off on gas inside your wardrobe here this little switch at the bottom that's currently on that's the isolator switch for your room heater so when you're using the room heater on 240 volt and when you turn that dial if you're not getting the little green light that means that this is turned off so just check that you've switched this on above that here is to run your water heater on 240 volts so you just need to come in flick that on and that will start to heat up your water heater using 240 volt also in the wardrobe you've got your solar panel controller um, you don't really have to worry about this it sort of does its own thing the little red light can be a bit misleading um, that just means that your solar is all connected up and doing what it should so underneath your seating on the right hand side when you're looking at the front of the van this grey unit under here is your water heater you don't really have to worry about that it does its own thing based on the controls you've selected but just up from that here this little yellow lever this is so that when you are storing the van again especially over winter you can come in flick that up it's a good idea to open up all your taps as well that's going to drain all the water out of your water heater and your water system it's going to prevent any pipes bursting and any frost damage 
when you come back to use the van just make sure you flick that back down nothing drastic will happen if you don't it just means that when you turn your water pump on all your water is going to pump straight out through the bottom of the van also under this side of the seating is the isolator switch for your solar panel so if you're going to be changing your battery to make sure that you don't get an electric shock off the panel just come in flick that off and then once you finish changing your battery and it's all connected up you can come in flick that on and your solar will be good to go up on the left hand side of your wardrobe up near your radio speaker this is the remote meter for your solar panel so as long as you've got the little sun in the top left and the dashing lines to the battery that means that your solar panel is all connected up and charging your battery the way it should. You do have a little select button and some screens to scroll through, so you're getting 22.4 volts off the battery. Your battery's at 13.8 volts, it's 100% charged. You've got some amp hours and wattages and bits and pieces. Your solar panel controller is currently 21 degrees. The very last screen here is your error code screen, so E0 means there's no faults. If you feel like there's something not quite right with the solar panel, just check this error code screen. There is a little booklet with the van that'll explain each error code if one does occur. You will find um, you may get a moon up in the top left corner. That means that everything is still connected up. It's just there's not enough sunlight to charge your battery. Here we've got the controls for your fridge. So on the left here, this is your mode selector. So the circle at the top is off. You've got 240 volt power, battery and gas at the bottom. So with the battery, um, this is designed so that you can maintain the temperature of the fridge as you travel. So you do have to have an auto electrician wire up that 12 pin trailer plug on the van and they also have to change the wiring on your towing vehicle. Then once you've had that done you can cool the fridge down on either gas or 240 volt the night before and then when you hook the van up you can switch it to battery and that will maintain the temperature that the fridge is currently at. It is not designed to cool the fridge down from warm, the fridge already has to be cold for that option. Um, as long as you've got 240 volt mains power plugged in the fridge will start to cool down and you'll be good to go. When you want to use gas you'll come over to the right here and you'll see this flicking light. That is the igniter in your fridge trying to light. So while that's clicking, you need to press your thermostat dial in because it's also your purge button. You'll need to hold that for a few seconds and then once it stops clicking, you'll know that your fridge has ignited on gas correctly. Um, you can then adjust your temperature from there and as I said before, it's just back up to the top for off. Here we've got your elements, your grill and your oven. So for your elements at the top here, you want to push the glass back as far as it'll go. You've got three gas elements and one 240 volt one. So the 240 volt one, just like a house oven, you can select any temperature you like. For the three gas ones, it's very much like a barbecue. So you've got one on the left and then the other two are on the right. So you're going to push, turn and hold it at the highest flame. You're then going to hit the igniter on the left here. Once it's lit, you can then adjust your temperature from there and then back to the top for off. It's really important once you've used any of these elements that you make sure the elements and all the wiring is cool to the touch because it has been known in the past when you put this glass down and it's still hot it will shatter the glass. For your grill and your oven it's very much the same. Push, turn and hold, hit that same igniter and then adjust your temperature from there. So you've got your grill on the right and your oven on the left. Your grill it might be a little bit hard to see it will ignite along that silver rail there and your oven will ignite just on that silver rail hiding at the back here we've got the inside of your toilet so on the front here is a little indicator so when that starts to become red you know that your toilet cassette is getting full you do have a little toilet roll holder on the side there now when you're using the toilet so you twist this to open up into your toilet cassette and then you press this down for your flushing water so you can flush everything away and then it's really important that you make sure you twist this and close your toilet cassette um, there is a seal in there so it'll seal over and prevent any smells but also your toilet cassette will not remove from its locker unless the toilet is closed on the inside 
So if you're trying to remove your toilet, you see it, you're having a bit of resistance, just jump in and make sure you've closed the toilet.